Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. In the previous tutorial, we talked about the basics of k-means clustering and tested a few lines of code using uh, some made-up data. Now, in this tutorial, let's actually try to segment an image using uh, this technique, the k-means clustering technique. And uh, just to remind you, uh, what k-means is all about you know you have a bunch of data that's scattered around okay let's say the pixel values so these uh, on the low end have certain uh, represent one type of phase in your image or a certain type of class in your image and the high pixel values or these ones represent a different uh, class so how do you separate the pixels corresponding to two different classes well Initially, uh, the algorithm assigns random seeds and then calculates the distance to each of these seeds from every data point. And then, uh, uh, and then based on how close it is to a given seed, it assigns a label to that specific data point. So in this example, all the red ones are, uh, you know, uh, clustered together. All the blue ones are clustered, clustered together. And after a few iterations, uh, we'll probably find the seed at the centroid where it's not moving anymore. So this is how it works in the background. So now uh, let's actually jump in and uh, start uh, coding. Okay, so before anything let's actually look at the image itself so this is the input image that we are trying to segment uh, and i've used this image a couple of times in the past so visually i can say that we have one two three and four maybe four clear uh, regions that we can isolate uh, but if we want we can include one more five later on okay but let's uh, start with four uh, clusters. So in the example I gave you earlier here, it's only two clusters, right? So in this case, we are trying to separate our data into four different clusters. So where do we start? Well, first by reading the image. So let's do uh, import numpy as np because I know we'll need it and also import opencv. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we used scikit-learn uh, to, you know, k-means exists in scikit-learn, it's also in CV, OpenCV. I like to use the one uh, in OpenCV because it makes it easier uh, to handle images. So I may as well use this. So first of all, let's uh, assign a variable called img and load our image. And this is mread. And my image is called bse underscore image.jpg. I don't think it's in the, uh, is it in a different folder? Let's go ahead and run this to make sure, okay, everything is fine. This is a 751 by 1000 by three image. Three represents the three channels. So I thought this was a gray level image. I'm glad we looked at this. This is a RGB image, okay? So even though it looks it looks gray, this uh, seems to be a uh, an RGB image, meaning it has three channels. And by the way, in OpenCV, whenever we read a color image, it's actually GBR, green, blue, and red. So let's go ahead and, uh, uh, well, let's not worry about converting. It doesn't matter, actually. I almost tried to convert the color spaces, but uh, if you look at Wikipedia, for example, for information on other color spaces, you can actually see, uh, or even documentation on Python, you know, you can actually see that other, some color spaces are great for image segmentation. So you can experiment by changing the color space. Let's not worry about that right now. But what we need to worry about right now is to flatten this image or change the uh, dimensions because for k-means, uh, we cannot just use 751 by 1000, yeah? We need to flatten this image into 751,000 pixels where each pixel has some sort of a value. And the way to res uh, reshape, I should say, not flatten, the way to reshape this is uh, img dot reshape okay and minus one actually takes care of this i mean if you know the dimensions you may as well go ahead and do it yourself but minus one actually takes care of uh, 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 of doing this for us so basically what this does is if i go ahead and run it my image two should be 751,000 by three that's pretty much it so i reshaped my image into uh, a different size array Okay, because it makes it uh, easy for, uh, or it makes, it enables us to uh, implement k-means algorithm. 
So, uh, and one thing I realize here is these are unsigned integer eight. And uh, if you look at OpenCV documentation, by the way, let me open the OpenCV k-means clustering documentation. This is amazing documentation. You can see uh, it should be of np.flow32 type. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll change our image from uh, uint8, unsigned integer 8, to float 32. And then we need to define how many clusters, right? So do we have three phases, four phases? How many clusters are we looking at? And then as par part of this uh, cv2.k-means uh, parameters, another parameter is criteria. What criteria uh, do you want to put in? And the criteria is basically when do you want to stop the calculations? Well, when a specified accuracy is achieved or if it reaches a maximum number of iterations, or we can do a combination of these two, okay? Uh, so so the, look at the documentation, uh, just Google search for OpenCV and k-means, and this is a great, uh, this is great documentation, I should say. And uh, now if you go down, it actually gives you, uh, a, you know, uh, an example code uh, for uh, image segmentation. Again, I mean, they don't call it segmentation. They call it color quantization. But anyway, I'm going to show this on a microscope image and I'm going to uh, shamelessly copy some of this code. Why reinvent this if, if it's already up there? Okay, but let me go ahead and explain line by line as we go through. Okay. So my image two is dot reshape minus one and uh, three. And the next thing we just realized that we need to reshape this. So image two equals NP dot float 32 image two. So I just con converted my image two into a float 32 uh, uh, image. Okay. And next I'm gonna define my criteria. If you remember, uh, we looked at some criteria you know, and the criteria I'm going to give here is, uh, let's go ahead and copy the criteria CV2. Let's just use this one. Okay. I'm a bit lazy to type. So this is nothing but okay when certain epsilon is reached or maximum iterations are reached. And uh, maximum iterations are 10 and epsilon is 1.0 in this case. Okay, so this is my criteria. And uh, number of clusters, clusters, my number of clusters k equals to let's say four. Okay, uh, because we, it looks like the image has four different types of uh, 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 features. Now, uh, we, one additional thing, let me also put uh, number of attempts equal to 10. Uh, I believe that's also one of the, one of the inputs that we need to give as part of our, uh, let me go back here. So now convert right label K means, uh, looks like they are not using attempts, but if you again, look at uh, some of the documentation here, it talks about what attempts is. Yeah, it's a flag to specify the number of times the algorithm is executed using different initial labelings. Okay, and the algorithm returns the labels. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna use that as part of uh, my input so I'm going to go ahead and copy this so I can edit it right here so it's going to return our output this algorithm is going to output three things okay one is compactness I'm not I don't care about that so I just I'm just returning it so compactness which is uh, again uh, it's it's the sum of squared of distance from each point to their corresponding centers. Okay, as the name suggests, it just tells you what the compactness is for that cluster. Labels, as you know, these are the labels, uh, and then uh, uh, and then center is uh, and then center is uh, as you can see the center of each cluster. Okay, so cv2.k means I do not have z. I have my image two as my input. And then uh, K is lowercase K that I used here. So let me just go ahead and use K. None is fine criteria. I define my criteria up here. And uh, oh, they actually put like number 10 here. I just attempts instead of 10. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, either way, it's fine. And uh, CV2.K means uh, instead of random centers, right? Let's try, I think we can also do PP, right? So that's the another one. Instead of random centers, we can use, uh, what does that mean? Again, you can actually look here. The flag is used to specify how initial centers are taken. 
Okay, so these are the two ways how the initial centers are actually assigned. It can be random or it can be whatever that PP centers is. So let me just go ahead and change that to this. Okay, so now that we, I mean, this is it. So when we run it, it's actually applying or k-means, although we don't know what the output is, right? I mean, we have to look at the output. So uh, again, it outputs these three parameters, like I mentioned, compactness, labels, and center. Okay, so now let's actually uh, uh, take the centers. Okay, so let's just say center equal to, uh, and, and uh, uh, let's, I mean, I'm thinking about what, to mention about the center. Let me run this again because I want to talk about this center. The center is again the center of each cluster, which kind of gives us the average, uh, in this example, gray level of that. So if you look at the center right there, it's a float 32 value, which is four by three. So if I open this, you can see uh, the center here is 153.16, 35.70. So these are the four centers of four clusters that it found. And 0, 1, 2, these correspond to the three channels that we have, RGB channels, and it's the same value. So let's actually convert that center to uh, unsigned integer 8 so we can plot it. Okay. So center equals to np u int 8, and uh, this is center so this converts our uh, uh, the centers into uh, unsigned integer so now we can go ahead and plot it okay and also uh, let's look at the labels uh, so we can plot this and uh, the way we do our labels is uh, let's actually say okay my res equals to center again by the way in case you need more explanation it's it's all right here i'm just looking at this basically saying okay convert back into unsigned integer 8 which is exactly what i did now I uh, converted that and now let's actually uh, flatten the labels and then reshape them. Okay, so if you look at uh, the label here, the label here is 751,000 by one. Okay, that's an ND array. So now let me take this center, okay, label and then flatten. Okay, let's run this until now so we can actually see what res looks like and this is unsigned integer 8 right so this is nothing but the flattened uh, label right there so now we have 751,000 by 3 over there and uh, let's actually re uh, uh, right now I'm reshaping it so we it looks like an image this is just a flattened uh, array so now let's actually make this into an image which should be 751 by 1000 okay so how do we do that again uh, we take this and then reshape it into what reshape into our original image which we called it img right yeah our original image and then look at the shape of our original image and then reshape it into that shape basically okay so this line is nothing but look at the shape of my original image and reshape this res into that specific shape and uh, there you go. So if I run this and let's look at RES2 any second now. Now you can see now original shape is back, back 751,000 by 1,000 by 3. That's it. Now we can visualize it, uh, which is a few extra lines of code that I want to write. So cv2.imwrite, meaning let's save it as a different file. And I'm going to call this segmented.jpg. And we want to save or res2 okay so now let's go ahead and run this and hopefully we should see a file called there you go so and let me open my folder here to find res2 to find res2 let me navigate to that okay segmented.jpg okay here is my segmented.jpg and let me bring my original image bsc image right there that is an amazing job actually when it comes to segmentation. So again, all it did is looked at the cluster of all the pixels corresponding to this gray level, for example, and found the centroid. The centroid apparently is uh, around a value of 153. In fact, if I go back, the centroid, the centroid, where was it? Uh, the center, right? So you see how many, so one centroid, 76 the next one 153 and 35 and 251 
these are the centroids of each cluster. And I'm, by the way, I'm using image J to open this so I can actually look at the centroid. There you go, value of 153. The bright one, 251. The dark one must be 35 and the gray one must be 76. Okay, so this is how easy it is to segment your images using k-means clustering, which usually works very well. Now, if you look at some of these pixels, you can always clean them, clean them up by using one of the methods I mentioned in my one of my earlier tutorials, where we can uh, uh, apply opening and closing and a few of those operations. Now, just out of curiosity, let's actually say our number of clusters is five. So now let's see how the image looks like, okay? And let me close my original image. I mean, the segmented image right there. And let me bring, uh, where is my segmented image? Right there. And drop it. And uh, it shows me five regions. So I think it, it added this extra region at 112. Okay, this is my segmented image. So, uh, but it's not, it doesn't look that great, you know, around, right around the pores right there, I see some misclassification. And at the same time, if I go to number of clusters equals to three, again, let's see how it looks like. Where is my image J and uh, my segmented image and dump it here. Now we should see only three classes. There you go, only three classes, one background, one bright and one uh, gray level. Okay, let me summarize this. Very easy, few lines of code right there, so very easy for you to follow. Import the image, reshape it, so we can perform clustering analysis. Well, reshape it and convert that to float32. And then uh, I just defined criteria up here and the number of clusters and the number of attempts. With, and these are all the parameters that go into our k-means uh, 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 algorithm right there, and which returns three things, compactness, labels, and centers. And the implementation is just cv2.kmeans and your input array, which is image2 in this case, and the number of clusters, and so on, all of the other parameters that we defined here. And then we just said, okay, I want to take my uh, values, okay, uh, the centers, which were float32, and convert them to unsigned integer 8, uh, which makes more sense from an image point of view. And then we also defined a parameter here where we uh, took the labels, flattened them, and then uh, reshaped them to form into a shape uh, corresponding to our input image, and that's it. We saved this. So as easy as this. So uh, I hope you found this uh, tutorial to be educational. If you like it, please go ahead and like this uh, video on YouTube. And if you like this series of videos, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.